do you like the coffee and stuff? Yeah. Oh, damn. Are you filming? Always. <laughs> The reason why we decided to buy the van was when we were in Moab, we were literally chasing weather. We were chasing sun wherever we could go. I think it was day three, day four. I literally looked at my girlfriend and we just said, you know what, van life. We're buying a van. And there was a bunch of vans behind us, around us, and they were walking around in the vans, super comfortable. We were just sitting inside like our, our little Subaru. And then it was super uncomfortable. We were working at the time too. And then in order to get up top to our tent, we had to get out, set everything up in the rain, which isn't bad, but doing that in the rain over and over and over while watching everyone have that comfort, it becomes a, it becomes pretty obvious that, you know, like if you're trying to make your setup um, comfortable and you're trying to do your best to make it comfortable, maybe van life is for you. Be like, oh, I love rock. <laughs> But I didn't know what climbing was back then. I didn't know how to climb. I just went in the gym and I just saw cool holds and I just climbed everything. And I'd leave, I'd be like, I am such a good climber. <laughs> Who's this guy? Like, climbing all over the place. Over the course of three, four years, there was a lot of major life events that kind of transpired from there. The divorce shook up my world. Before the divorce, classic Asian guy, I would go to work, work was the only thing I knew, and I'd climb the corporate ladder, and I was climbing it really fast, to the point where I think if I were to continue, it would have been pretty unhealthy, because I wouldn't know anything about any of this. So the divorce honestly shook up my world, and it made me think differently, and I had one mentor who like really set the tone for me. So he said, five years from now, whatever you do, you want to make sure that you're, you're proud of yourself for making that decision. My identity at that time was work. And then I remember talking to folks outside of it. And I think what like hit home was whenever someone would say something about me, it would be, oh no, he works really hard at work. And that was it. I'm like, there's much, much more to me. But then I realized, you know, I'm, I'm shy. I don't talk, I don't share. So obviously they won't know. And it is true. I just went to work and I went home. I'm actually a heavy introvert and I didn't know how to talk to people. So I remember, watching this YouTube clip online on how to talk to people. <laughs> That's literally how I talk to people. It was like, there's like the four things that you ask. What's their name? What's their hobby? What's their occupation? And what's their goal in life? <laughs> I took that to the climbing gym. I go, what's your name? What's your hobby? I'm doing it right now. Check. Uh, <laughs> you know? What's your goal? The climb. Ah, check. <laughs> uh, what are your family? Who are you? <laughs> so like I was in the hospital for five days. So I had an ulcer that burst. And I remember day two and three, I just wanted to give up. Like I just, I just lost all hope. And then it wasn't until I had like someone really close to me come up and be like, hey, you gotta fight through, you gotta do this. But you know, like still at that time in my mind, I was like, yeah, there's, there's no point. And I remember graduating from ICU into, I think they call it like the general room and like floor three, so high enough for me to see the ocean in La, in La Jolla. And I just remember looking out in the window and I saw the La Jolla sunset and I just instantly remember, you know what? It's not so bad. I'm breathing. This is good. This is this is why you do it. This is, this is what's generating your happiness. And so after that point, I think my mood started changing, everything started changing. And I knew at that point I could lose everything and still be okay because this is all I need in life.